Okay, we're going to be talking about Valentine's today. I've entitled my message, Be My Valentine. I enjoyed over the years hearing my mom and dad talk about them dating. They call it sparking. Any, any older people, y'all remember that term? They sparked. Uh, but it was on Valentine's Day that when they first dated. <laughs> so that our little special place, my heart for uh, Valentine's. The world has commercialized everything, if you will, but they've really, we got through with the, uh, the fall stuff, Thanksgiving stuff, Christmas. Before Christmas stuff could get out, they had Valentine's stuff, and next thing you know, they'll have the Easter stuff out. They've really commercialized uh, our holidays. But we're going to be talking about the first Valentine couple today. Matter of fact, it was the first couple, wasn't it? Adam and Eve. And by the way, let me be plain again, that was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Right? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 12, let's begin with verse 11. Let the women learn in silence with all sub subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived when it came to taking of the forbidden fruit. But the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If they continue in faith and charity and, and holiness with sobriety. Our text takes us back a long way to the first man and first woman in the Garden of Eden who were the parents of what you see today, the whole world. We trace back the time of, if we can according to the Bible, to those days it would be some 6,000 years ago. I believe literally what the scripture says. Now they may find fossils of other creatures and animals that lived in prehistoric days. But folk, I don't know what God did back yonder in the past. I don't know what he had existing on this earth. That's his business. He didn't tell me. And I don't need to know. But I'll tell you this much, we, according to the scripture, we trace back to Adam and Eve some 6,000 years ago. But Adam says to Eve to be his valentine, be my valentine, he says. Was true love. Eve was taken from Adam, was she not? The Bible says that God took a rib from Adam, and he made Eve. That's good enough. I don't know how he did. I don't know how he made y'all, <laughs> nor me. Other than he spoke the world into existence, the Bible says. But he took, Eve was taken from the rib of Adam. By the way, there was no jealousy back in those days. <laughs> One day Adam was standing out in the field a little bit longer than he ought to have been. He came in and Eve snuggled up to him and began to count his ribs. <laughs> Anticipating that maybe 
There was another rib missing. He stayed out a little later than he should have. <laughs> I'm joking, folks. <laughs> there was no jealousy. It, isn't that wonderful? You know, a man is carnal, and man does things that are carnal. And God made women beautiful. Amen. He's a beautiful creature, and God knew what he was doing. And one woman notices if another man observing some other women, doesn't he? But folk, there was no other. There was no cheating going on. It was Adam and Eve. Eve messed up, didn't she? The scripture says she was deceived. She took of the forbidden fruit. She listened to Satan. Satan was cunning, wasn't he? And folk, he hadn't changed. He's slick with what he does. But she took of the fruit and ate and gave to Adam. The Bible says Adam was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. Remember that. But after that Eve had already taken the fruit, And the Lord had said, The day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The word death means separation. But here she is, she's already taken the forbidden fruit. That meant death for her. That meant that she and Adam were going to be separated eternally. So what did he do? He took of the forbidden fruit from her. He was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. He made a great sacrifice. He chose to die with Eve. He said... He would, already Eve was going to be separated from God. But Adam was saying, you are my valentine. I love you and I don't want to be separated from you. But because of their sin, death was passed upon their children, upon all men. And the Bible says we came here as sinners. No choice. We were born after the blood of Adam. The first Adam. But God sends a second Adam. That's what Jesus is called, the second Adam. God said, through Jesus, you are my valentine. That's what God says. To the whole world, he says, I'm your valentine. You're my valentine. But to you, God says, hey, I love you. I've loved you from the beginning. And God did something that Adam could not do. Adam says to Eve, honey, I'm going to die with you. You took of the forbidden fruit. Now I'm going to take it. He was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. You could say in a sense that Adam chose Eve over God, didn't he? Because he knew he was going to be separated. And get this. Adam said to Eve, I'll die with you. Jesus said to us, I'll die for you. 
That's what happened. He took our place on the cross. He died for our sin. Y'all have heard that many, many times, but let it sink in. He gave His precious blood that we might live forever with Him. The church, especially, is Jesus' valentine. He gave Himself for the church. If you would, look back at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 on your paper. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nursed and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this call shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. That's the whole picture of marriage itself, is a picture of Christ's love for his valentine, or his church. And the scripture says he, he's to receive his church as a bride. Folk, I can tell you this much. It's a glorious privilege in being a member of His church. A special privilege. Quite often people, you've heard people say before, I can serve the Lord just as well outside of a church as I can in a church. Y'all show me the scripture and verse. That's all made up by man. The Lord made the church his bride. He's going to receive his church as a bride. And marriage itself is a picture of the Lord's love for his church. And y'all can see that our number's down. Uh, I make no excuses for that. Uh, we've got some 250 some odd church members. Most of them we don't know where they are. But I'm going to read your scripture and you let it sink in. These scriptures we have at the last. Hebrews 10 verse 25 and 26. And I want to pound them in our minds and thoughts and hearts so we realize how important it is of going to church. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, way back in the days of the Hebrews, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. In other words, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some were doing back then, but exhorting one another so much the more as ye see the day approaching now the consequence, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, if we neglect assembling ourselves together, after that we've come to the knowledge of the truth, 
there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. You're going to pay for it if you start skipping church. That's what it says. I didn't say it. You can read, read what Paul said to the Hebrews. The scripture doesn't say Paul wrote it, but it's like his other writings. We assume that Paul wrote it. If we sin willfully, that means the forsaking of the assembly of ourselves together. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But if you look down at just certain indignation, the, the next scripture says, you're looking for that judgment that's to come. Jesus loves his valentine, and that's the church. And we're part of that. Folk church membership is a critical thing for the Christian. Something that you ought to take care of. 